Uh, Amory Levins is uh, co-founder, chairman, and uh, chief scientist at RMI, and the uh, Reinventing Fire, the book that RMI has put out uh, with your name on the cover, primarily, but also authored with other RMI, RMI scientists, 60 of us, <laughs> proposes that uh, the United States could uh, navigate a way to free ourselves from fossil fuels, and also can do that without too much political entanglement. Yeah, more precisely, we showed how to run a 2.6-fold bigger economy in 2050 with no oil, no coal, no nuclear energy, a third less natural gas, $5 trillion cheaper than business as usual, needing no new inventions and no act of Congress, the transition led by business for profit. And it seems to me that one of the most, uh, one of the, the presumptions that we have in, in that we can have that change come about uh, it, it takes me to the stream that I hear in discussions of climate change, that the explosion in world population and in uh, standard of living in the past century or so, uh, I, I've heard it posited that it is dependent entirely on how easily we can dig up and pump fuel from the ground. Do we have to go back to the Stone Age? In order to no, get well, the historically, that, that is how the transition worked, that fossil fuels have created our wealth, uh, Build modern civilization, enrich the lives of billions of people. However, we now have even better, cheaper, faster ways to do the same thing with efficiency of renewables. And developing countries have a particular opportunity to do that because when you're building your infrastructure the first time, it's a lot easier to build it right than fix it later. They also are, on average, about three times less efficient than the industrialized countries, which bigger still have payoff. a long way to go. So there's a bigger payoff. Uh, there is huge capital leverage for development and freeing up capital from energy supply to fund other development needs. Uh, <clears throat> and that's why it's very gratifying that the sort of shift we analyzed for the United States is now rapidly emerging in China, Japan, India, uh, and indeed many other countries. So just back from those places, I, I'm most attuned to them. but. Uh, this is actually a global trend, and the majority of new renewable electricity being added now is in developing countries. Uh, of the, say, $224 billion of private investment that went that way last year, uh, adding 84 billion watts of renewable electricity, other than big hydro, the majority was in, in developing countries. A very encouraging trend. That seems to, the way, the way that you frame that, it seems to be just something that is rolling along. It seems to be something that is starting to bloom to some degree. Uh, very much so. It is, you know, yes. half the world's new mm -hmm. generating capacity added every year starting in odd 8 has been renewable. Uh, and a fifth of the world's electricity today is renewable. Both of those numbers include big hydro, but even if you take it out, it's the most important thing going on in energy supply. Uh, and at the same time, the efficiency revolution is taking hold, and developing countries are realizing they can and must leapfrog over the mistakes we made. They don't need to build inefficient and then fix it. They don't need to build dirty and then clean it up. In fact, if they do, they won't be able to afford to develop. So China, since 2005, has made huge strides in both efficiency and renewables, where it's the world leader. China, in odd five, has had its top strategic priority for national development be energy efficiency. Because otherwise they can't afford to develop, and they know that. It's, it's enlightened self-interest. They didn't do it because a treaty made them do it. But because it, that, like it really drives, it drives their whole development strategy. And in the latest party congress, uh, the party using for them a very loaded word said we need a revolution in you know, it's a revolutionary party in, in how energy is both used and supplied. So when they use that word, they're serious? They're very serious. Yes. Individuals have wanted to know what are the steps that you can take. You know, as you're watching the snail's pace change uh, of, your, of your government, uh, there are now compact fluorescents. Some of us can ride our bikes to work. But if we well, want to be... There are now LEDs <coughs> even better than compact fluorescents. We just put them all over our house. If there was any step that is top of mind now, an insight that you've come up with in, your, in the research that went into this book. Well, use, use energy mindfully, and if you're buying something that uses energy, whether in your home, your workplace, and transportation, and where you live, how you live, uh, get informed and buy the most efficient thing you can. And that not only cuts your cost and the cost to the planet and the cost to our national security, 
it also sends a strong signal to those around you and to those who are trying to sell you other things that you're going to buy something else because it's a better deal, it's what you want, and that's what they better supply before you buy it from somebody else. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, that's a wrap.